In this tutorial we will go through some basics of using Furiball in Maya. First let's load our Furiball plugin. And like, let's check auto load too so next time it will be loaded automatically. You can notice that now my Furiball menu appeared and I can choose Furiball in a render in Uport. If I press create default render settings. Furiball will create a render settings node and start using it in this viewport. I can display my render setting nodes here in render nodes manager. And I can create uh, different nodes here with different settings, uh, duplicate nodes, uh, make some presets. So let's duplicate this one here, for example. Can Rename it to example final. And we can choose different settings for quality. And use this node only for final image. Okay, now let's let's have a look at the the render settings node and what we have here. First thing here are our quality settings, so sample per pixel, jitter multi-sampling, multi-pass multi-sampling, settings for multi-pass multi-sampling and filtering. The next one are features, you can turn on and off every feature of the rendering. So I can turn off ambient occlusion, example. This is very useful for optimizing uh, rendering time when you are tweaking for example reflections then you can turn off every other thing than reflections to speed up the computing. Down here are settings for features like for textures, texture filtering and bump filtering bias. You can downsample textures to save memory and you can clear texture memory. In hair you can set density of the hairs, that means that only few of the hairs will be rendered and increase performance for tuning up the scene. You can refresh reflection maps, set number of layers for computing transparency object and set number of samples for ambient occlusion layer and for color color bleeding clear. Here are settings for the top field. You can show focus range in the viewport. Uh, you can tell depth of field to use super sampling resolution. You can choose your bokeh type and maximal bokeh type size and set some unit conver conversion for your scene. And the last thing here are the number of steps for motion blur computing. That's all from features. Now in post process you can set up your glow. Here in the render settings you can choose to your output pass to display in the viewport or to render. You can set up depth. You can adjust viewport gamma correction. You can choose if you want to render to viewport or not. And region of a scan uh, select render se selection set to render just part of your scene. You can choose that everything else except this set should be made and you can set the order of rendering transparent fluid and particles. These are settings for the texture size path and down here settings for stereo camera, type of stereo rendering and some other 
settings of Fury Ball, like option to draw wireframe on selected object and compatibility with older versions of Fury Ball and uh, tools to debug your render time and memory use. That's all from render settings node. Now let's have a look at lights. So let's create a spotlight. Freeball supports depth map shadows, so let's turn it on and let's turn on shadows in render settings node. Ok, our light is casting shadows. Let's set our resolution higher and we can adjust filter size. and bias. If you are using high filter size on your light it's better to have a lower resolution because the higher resolution is not visible at all and it's only causing your render time to go up. Furball has its own settings for light which you can connect to your light by selecting the light and selecting at light attributes in Furball tab. You can assign new or some existing, there are none of them. What I'm interested in here are settings of shadows. I can adjust the distance in which shadows are created. And I can set filtering for the shadows, which is now pretty creepy. So let's turn it to stochastic and add more samples. Variable penumbra simulates a bigger source of light. Cascade shadow map settings are for directional lights. Here are settings for indirect lighting and here we can enable translucence with this light and one very useful thing you can select a set which will this light affect so if I create set for teapot The light is now only shining on the teapot. Let's hide the spotlight for now and let's create a directional light and look at settings of directional lights. So again I will turn on shadows and assign new light attribute node. Directional light has its own settings here in cascaded shadow maps. Uh, split count number means that scene will be split into four parts or the shadow map for this scene will be split in the, into four parts and coefficient controls the size of these parts. 
in distance from camera. So if I duplicate this and move it far away, we can see that shadows and direction light works just fine. Let's hide the action light too and have a look at area light. Again, assign light attribute node turn on shadows and it's pretty obvious here that Furiball is creating a grid of spotlights for the area light you can control a number of these spotlights here in light settings node Un under the area light tab you can adjust shadow coefficient to speed up shadow computing and adjust resolution Ok, that's area light, let's hide it, settings for point light are the same like for, for spotlight, but point light creates not one shadow map, but six of them. So this means there will be six shadow maps in this size. The last option for lighting is to emit light from object. So I will duplicate the teapot for this. Combine it to one object. And I will assign it some material and I need to my incandescence to be higher than zero to emit light and I have to assign mesh attribute node for this so with my mesh selected I assign new mesh attribute node and here in emit light turn it on and these settings are similar to those in era light except, except I can choose decay and turn on shadows and choose shadow resolution for every light created on this object uh, intensity of this glowing object is controlled by incandescence in the material so I will switch to ASV and set the value to some higher value Now the teapot is emitting light.
So let's have a look at materials. Uh, I will leave just the spotlight here for this and maybe duplicate it. and at the same light attribute settings and I forgot about indirect lighting so uh, you can enable it in light settings node here in indirect lighting again it has to be enabled in render settings in features too and I set intensity higher and number of lights and maybe make the teapot some color for indirect lighting to be more visible and now we can see it's this light 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 bounces and shines on the objects so these settings are similar to those one in area lights and objects emitting lights so again number of lights intensity possibility of some decay and possibility to use shadows for indirect lights shadow bias and coefficient to speed up computing of shadows ok let's have a look at football materials features to use them we must select our material and add material attribute node and first of them is alpha mask to use alpha mask material has to have some texture mapped in transparency so let's use the same texture that is in color for example If we turn on transparency in the render settings now, this object is transparent and when I turn on alpha mask in Furibor material settings, Furibor begins to cut out the transparent parts. So if I adjust a texture a little bit the areas below the threshold are completely transparent and there's no material at all this is very useful when, when you are creating uh, vegetation like leaves and other stuff let's make our object transparent again and try out some refraction again in material settings node ok I will add some texture for 
refraction to be more visible. And add some thickness. Maybe more transparent. Now the light going through is refracted. You can adjust some settings here, like attenuation, Fresnel. and other stuff. Another thing that can be found in here is subsurface scattering. So let's turn transparency off. And turn on subsurface scattering. Turn it on in under settings too. And now subsurface scattering begins to appear. You can use some preset, like Vox, and we can use Specular for subsurface scattering, or we can use Specular of the material. Here are some settings like number of layer, softness, color scattering, diffuses of each layer and colors of each layer, uh, resolution of subsurface texture, and and other attributes to tweak out subsurface scattering. You can control the amount of scatter by mapping texture in softness. And thing that's connected to subsurface scattering is translucency. To enable translucency, we must first put some texture in translucency attribute here. So let's take this texture from color and put it there. I will make it red to be more visible. Now I must enable translucency in the light attribute settings. And just adjust depth and focus. We can also use another thing that's in the Fury Ball Material Settings node, and that's Velvet. The amount, the color. Furryball is also able to render Maya procedural textures. First, enable them in render settings. I will add one as a color of the floor.
Now here down in extra attributes is resolution in which football is rendering the texture. I want to tweak my texture so I will set it to some lower value. And the last thing to mention about Furiball materials is Furiball car paint. So let's create it in Hypershade. Settings of Furiball car paint material are similar to the one in Mental Array and it works great with advanced reflection. Things like complex peculiarity, flakes, complex reflections and other parameters are included. Now let's have a look at Fireball's ambient occlusion and color bleeding. Let's enable them in render settings. And now I want to view just the ambient occlusion pass. Under Fireball menu in GI settings I can tweak ambient occlusion its quality, its radius and angle under the ambient occlusion is created intensity Let's tune up color bleeding. Also in GI settings. To use Furiball Mesh features we must add Furiball Mesh Attribute node. So select the mesh and in Furiball menu add Mesh Attribute node. Here we can set up render settings for the mesh like it if it should be rendered as made, if it should Ignore fog and behavior in motion blur, depth of field, and ambient occlusion. And other things are overrides for ambient occlusion for intensity out and intensity received. Same goes for color bleeding. And emit light, we used it before. Now let's have a look at Furiball Subdivision and Displacement. So we can enable it under Subdivision tab. It will set the selection factor to 1 for now. And enable Subdivision in Render Settings. So our teapot is smoothed now. We can display the wireframe. Check draw Y frame in render settings down here and select teapot. Now we can add more divisions.
we can choose if we want to these divisions to dis disappear with distance to be distance adaptive we can adjust that with this coefficient and we can check if we want only the silhouettes, the edges of the object to be smoothed out if we want the silhouettes in shadows to be smoothed out or the smoothing to be adaptive to the displacement and if we want to smooth UVs for the smoothed mesh Now when the teapot is tessellated, let's try add some displacement. Let's turn the wireframe off. And add displacement map to the material. Now the displacement is pretty high, we can adjust that by color gain of the displacement texture. And by setting offset to some negative value. Let's turn off the subsurface scattering to better see the displacement. We can add more tessellation. So this is a way how to from very low poly object create a very detailed one. Now let's have a look at Fourier ball techniques for reflection. Let's use the high poly teapot for this. Reflection settings can be found in mesh settings node under reflections. And first option is to map an existing image environment map to the reflection. So let's pick one. I will be using this one, for example. And to see my reflections, I need to turn them on in render settings node here. And material to be reflective can't have black color in reflected color so let's let's make it white and set reflectivity to some higher value and let's lower down bump mapping because now it's diffusing the reflection So this is environment map reflection. It's very fast but it doesn't match the scene. More accurate option is to generate reflect map. So let's remove environment map. And here in reflect map type we'll choose static. Static means that reflection map is generated at first frame. 
and then remains the same no matter if any objects are moving in the scene or anything changes the reflect map stays the same best thing to do is to grab static reflection map so Furiball saves it to the to file and next time you open the scene Furiball just reload the file and Furiball doesn't have to compute the reflection map again so if I press grab static reflection map choose some directory and render now reflect map type has changed to static grab one and now for the ball is loading reflection map from file also I can still change reflectivity and reflected color if I create some object here It won't just get don't get reflected in here because the reflection map is read it from the file. Next option is to generate reflection map on every frame. And now if I move this object around it's possible to see it in reflection map. Dynamic reflection map is good to use only if it's necessary, otherwise it's good to use just the grabbing of static reflection map because you will save uh, render time a lot. Now these maps are created as spear maps, that means it's not so realistic, for example the teapot doesn't reflect itself so if I want more realistic reflection maps I can turn on advanced reflections and now more accurate reflection map is generated and teapot is reflection itself and there are many options to get rid of artifacts and speed up the computing here also for any reflection map I can choose resolution and blur, blur it by, by some filter advanced reflections are useful for objects that, that are not very spear shaped like uh, cars and other complicated objects okay i will turn off advanced reflection and choose static frame and now let's have a look at planar reflections planar reflections are meant to be used on flat surfaces like this floor for example so let's assign new mesh settings node to the floor enable planar mirror reflections and again the material has to have some reflectivity and some reflected color here I can control resolution in which planar reflection map is rendered to 
speed up or to adjust details. I can blur planar reflections and if I have some bump mapping on the object let's use the same texture like in fuse I can define how much the bump mapping is affecting the reflection and here are some advanced settings for plane reflection normal and some pivot settings and down here are some common parameters for all types of reflection like max distance for drawing reflection uh, option to desaturate the reflections and option to define a curve of attenuation of the reflection let's remove bump and pink for now and here we can define which features will be rendered in reflections it's useful for speed up reflection computing